Hey, what's up? It's Tetris. I'm here at the Galaxy House for the Music and Identity panel, being joined by such amazing artists. How are you guys doing today? Really Great. good. Amazing. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Contra. I'm one half of Cartel Madras. I'm Eboshi. I'm the other half of Cartel Madras. I'm Kali. I am going to make this funny joke. I'm <laughs> two out of two of Kali. No, I have to address the elephant in the room. I mean, everybody just did their introductions. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot of name game that's happening on this stage right now. I mean, Tetris, Contra, I mean, it's so many names. And Contra, what I love about you is you say, it just came to you. You just made it up in the moment when you came up with your name. Our manager was like, okay, artist's name, go. We're going, you're going into an interview. I mean, hers has a bit more of a story. Mine was like Contra, video game, contraband. It makes sense. Let's oh, see, go. That's what, I was like, I, it had to come from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I am a video game, so there we go. Okay, exactly. Oh, yeah. Now, we're talking about identity today, so I want to talk with you guys about first your inspirations. So tell me an LGBTQ plus artist that has inspired you. So many. First of all, Cakes Tequila, Cakes Tequila is someone that we saw kind of when we were like growing up before we were Cartel Madras yeah. that really inspired us to just own our LGBTQ plus identity and also be comfortable as rappers that didn't necessarily fit the mold. Yeah. Cakes is biggest shout out to Cakes. And when did you find that inspiration? Because you guys are sisters. So at what point did you say, look at your sister and say, you know what I want to do? I want to create this music group mm -hmm. and we're going to have this identity. We were always, you know, nerdy internet music kids. Like we were always tinkering around making music secretly in our mother's basement. And then Finally, I think at a point we were like, I think it makes sense for us to try this together and let's see what happens. And then it landed. So that was like 2018, I'd say. Well, I mean, four years later, do you feel like you guys have gotten in the groove of it? Do you argue about like, I mean, your sisters, I know it has to happen in the creative process. Like we definitely make fun of each other more than any type of arguing, which I think works in the creative process because we can like cut the BS and just get to, essentially it's like, oh, that sounds corny, dude. That was bad. Yeah, let's change that lyric. That <laughs> but you yeah. can be that honest. You don't mm -hmm. feel bad exactly. about it because, I mean, you've known each other your whole lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Essentially. And then I think your story is so creative, Kali. I mean, you're so young, by the way, and already you've played Viper Room, you've had this career. How does your journey feel to now be here at South by Southwest? I feel like I'm just getting started. I feel like um, because I'm so young, there have been like so many uphills, but every time I feel like I go through something challenging, I'm starting fresh. Um, definitely being at South By for the first time, I wouldn't say it's uphill, I would say it's like a, a puzzle. I would say it's like Tetris. Oh, look at that. You know? I love that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting to be around people that are older than me because I feel like I can relate to a lot of people, but just the moments where I've had realizations are just like at a different point in my life, like when I'm like 14 and stuff, you know? <laughs> I love hearing that. Back when I was 14 years old and all the things I went through. But no, you speak with such like a maturity, so I can tell that you can relate. And tell me somebody that inspired you, I asked the ladies that. I mean, on the way here, I was listening to one of my favorite artists, Snail Mail, um, and she was one of the first artists that was gay, but in like a, a cool way, you know? <laughs> gay in a cool way, put that on a t-shirt. That, that I discovered, um, and there's, there's something to being gay in the music industry without it, with, without feeling like that has to be all that you are, but without suppressing it. It's a very, you know, uh, interesting tightrope to walk. Yeah, of course, and that's a great bridge to my next question because being an LGBTQ plus artist, that's a great thing to say. Like, that's a good, that's a good positive thing, but you don't want to be pigeonholed. And how do you find the balance in wanting to be proud of that identity, but also not wanting to be put in a box? That's a great question. I saw a tweet the other day that was, <laughs> It was funny because I feel like now there are so many more queer spaces for queer artists and we had a lot of pioneers to like make this space 
for us. And now we can so unabashedly be ourselves and really own our identity in all of its facets. Whereas before, I feel like so many artists were, you know, pigeonholed into being a queer artist and that was all they were known for. And it was with or without them wanting it to be that way, just their shtick. And I feel like that's just an unfair box to be put in as a queer artist, especially because you're an artist first mm -hmm. and everything else comes after. And part of your identity is such a huge aspect of how you make your music. And I lost the question. <laughs> no, but you, were, you, you did not lose the question. But one thing you, you said I want to touch on, you said being unabashedly yourself. Has there ever been a time in your career so far that you felt like you were in a space that you were not allowed or you felt uncomfortable being yourself? I mean, constantly. Like, so we're, you know, for context, we're from Canada, and there's, there's a lot of different demographic groups that we would fit into. But it's always like, oh, sometimes you get thrown into a lineup because of your identity, which is you know, a, a weird space to be in as an artist because you're like, I don't actually sound like anyone on this lineup. We just all happen to be women. We just all happen to be from India. We just all happen to be queer. You know what I mean? Wow. And it's a strange space to be in in music because I think as the industry, you're trying to navigate it for artists in a way where you feel like you belong. But I think for artists, it's like, my music is so particular and unique. I need you to hear that first. No, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, you wanted to come in on yeah that. I agree. I agree with everything you've been saying. Um, it's it's really crazy that people... I feel like people don't even listen to the music sometimes, and it's like... It's, it's really interesting to, like, have to find this balance, especially when I, I'm young, like, I'm figuring everything out, and um, I agree with, like your identity impacts the identity of your music. Like, mm -hmm. um, recently, like, I've come out as non-binary, and it's interesting to make that connection with my music. I feel like it doesn't fit into a box, but then people want to put it into mm -hmm. a box, and um, it just doesn't work when you actually listen. Well, Kali, I want to ask you, how do you approach your writing process then? When you're, when you're creating, do you think about that? Oh, yeah. I remember the first time I was like sort of being open about, um, you know, being queer in my music. And it was really interesting because there was a lot of tension within myself about bringing that up in my music because you know, automatically then someone's going to, you know, put you on a lineup with a gay pride flag <laughs> behind you. And, like, yes, like, you know, LGBT, I'm all for it. Like, the queers are the best people in the world, but... We love to hear it. Yeah, but it's also, like, lots of the world is not queer, and then you're automatically, like, oh, them... Like, they, them, you know, like, isolated. And I think everybody should be able to enjoy music that's from all kinds of perspectives instead of just, like, the one that they're most comfortable in, if that makes any sense. And in my writing process, when I first was, like, open about being gay in my music, it was really hard for me to come to terms with that and feel like comfortable with that. And now I've realized like a few years later, like I don't have to explicitly be gay, but I don't have to explicitly not be gay. I can just be myself. Well, first of all, thank you for that answer. It's very brave what you're doing. So congratulations on everything that you're doing. So thank far. you. Of course, and I want to ask you guys about a venue. Has there ever been a venue that you've seen that you feel like is such an important part of our community that has supported us? So, a venue. Um, we're originally from Calgary, Alberta, which might be shocking to a few. But um, they don't even know that. <laughs> they're like, what the <laughs> that? Like Canada. That? What? what? Calgary. Um, but there's been a lot of venues there that we were able to kind of break into that typically wouldn't, you know, play artists like us or music like us, which is quite weird and experimental. Um, but, you know, 2018, when we were coming up there, like, shout out to the Hi-Fi Club, 
like really, really iconic venue, like in Western Canada, one of the great venues, which recently shut down last year, but um, that was pretty, pretty pivotal in our career, I would say. Absolutely. There's like so many spaces in Calgary that we've had the pleasure of performing that we grew up seeing our favorite artists perform at. And, you know, seeing people on stage that the only thing you have in common with them is the music really does shape how you approach artistry generally. Mm -hmm. We grew up mm -hmm. seeing people that, you know, looked le nothing like us, had completely different identities per se, but we just saw them as musicians and artists and that's who we became. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to go back to that representation, right? You don't want to be pigeonholed and put in a box, but I do think there is an issue with representation still with LGBTQ plus in our community. How do you feel like those issues can be addressed or where do you see the future heading as far as representation? It's a great question. I think the future just involves, you know, people taking on many more aspects of their identity and being authentic with it. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe like the best way to be represented is by relating to experiences and relating to stories. Because absolutely I can see someone that might look like me or might have the same sort of queer identity as me, but they might not believe any of the same things I do. And they might not have any of the same stories or life experiences that I do. But at the end of the day, like we grew up seeing and hearing music that had nothing to do with us and kind of didn't tell any of our stories, but that's okay because the power of imagination is that you can put yourself into a song and you can put yourself into a story. And great artists do not have to relate to you in any way aside from making great music. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think the best aspect of the future of queer music is that we're only gonna get louder and we're only gonna get better with more experimentation and mm -hmm. more of us. Yeah, I love that. And it's like, you know, like she was saying, you grow up listening to, like I grew up listening to, you know, a bunch of white dudes <laughs> who I have nothing in common with, but it's like I can do that and find myself in some of their stories, right? Like the Shins or Fleet Foxes or Prince, right? Like, but you, you reverse that and it's like, okay, can you make queer music and have someone who's nothing like you look at you and find their story in your music, right? Which is what I think the future of queer, queer music is. It's going to be popular music, it's going to be the mainstream, right? At, at, I think five years from now, we're just music, right? It is everywhere, which you see now in yeah. huge, huge acts, right? Of course, you even yeah. you know, have Lil Nas X, and mm -hmm. I think he is someone that, I listen to his lyrics and he has so many queer mm -hmm. you know, references there, mm -hmm. but then you go to a big show and you see the entire crowd. And I think that goes back to your point exactly. of you, you hear your, your story in someone else's music, whether they're queer or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree in that. And um, I just think queer people are everywhere now. And like you were saying earlier, especially as a young person and like in Gen Z, I think, a lot of my age group doesn't recognize like how many people paved the way for us and mm. the the hardships that we're not facing because we're on the younger end and we're in this great big boom of like you know acceptance or on the road to that but I agree like there's no reason that people shouldn't be able to put themselves into queer music especially I think that there's a lot of empathy in it um, because there's been so many years of suppression and you know being considerate of people that wouldn't accept you like that's you know there's this underlying layer of empathy that a lot of music doesn't have that I know queer music will always have. Mm -hmm. I wish I had your knowledge at 17 man that's awesome. <laughs> And um, so let's talk about kind of this coming out of the pandemic experience. How has your recording process been in like, in getting back out here at South by Southwest? I know you guys just started in 2018. You're so young. So I feel like a lot of the creativity happened during the pandemic. So how has that kind of changed your creation in music? We're, um, we're an interesting case, because I think when we started, we also began touring right away. So like from 2018 to early 2020, we finished about 100 shows and then you know we were we were in new york and the pandemic started so we had to fly back and we got split up 
for the quarantine. So she was in Toronto and I was in Calgary. Wow. So we were like making music like very like Ben Gibbard Postal Service style, like over the internet, right? And we, we'd fly back here and there to like shoot music videos and whatnot. But if, making pandemic albums has been an interesting experience because our music is very loud. It belongs in a club. It's quite in your face. So it's like, how can you take that energy and put it into a song and you are, you know, you're not going to see a club for the next two years, but how can you still make a bop, right? Which has been an interesting challenge and experience. But I actually preferred that during the pandemic. I feel like a lot of us can think back to those times that we needed a bop. I know like Rain On Me to me was the bop of the pandemic from Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande because it's like, yeah, we're all in the house, but we want to have a good time still and dance around our kitchens. And I love that you guys were able to continue to do that throughout the pandemic. And what about yourself? I mean, great point. Like it was a challenge to make like uplifting music. I know that myself, like, I make music alone, and so that that became a very dark process at times, and there were struggles, but honestly, like, when I needed to let it out, it just came out, and I think that before the pandemic, my music was very jubilant, and it's, it's not lacking that feeling now, but it's definitely uh, increased in understanding of the the gray space of emotions, like nothing is that black and white anymore. And coming out of the pandemic, that's sort of, that's been my vibe. <laughs> like just there's, there's a wide variety and range of emotions that need to be expressed, whether they're loud and blaring guitars or they're a more meditative piano, you know, whatever. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I um, embrace the spectrum there. And being here at South by Southwest, one of my favorite things is I'm learning so much while I'm here about technology. I keep hearing about, you know, Bitcoin and all the crypto and the NFTs, just so much is happening. And to have music happen at the same time, I think is really cool. How do you feel like technology is changing the way we release music? In every way I've seen so much of music change in the past five years has been because of technological changes and advances. And in some ways it's extremely exciting to see and makes it feel like every moment is at the cutting edge of what's happening. And then at some, at some points it's also like very scary and intimidating because it's like, how do you keep up with something that is changing constantly? I feel like people still don't know what an NFT is. And sometimes I'm like, mm, do, I? do I? Do I know? <laughs> and I feel, I feel like, that aspect of being a musician can be sometimes the most daunting part because you do feel like you have to be like on top of it constantly and you have to stay updated on all of the things that are changing around you. And I feel like because of that, there's, there tends to be amongst old heads and, and people of generations previous to ours, there can be sometimes like a, a Luddite quality to approaching technology where you're like, you know what, I I'm good. I'm just gonna record in the studio, go home, do nothing, yeah. tour. Keep it, keep it simple. I feel like, especially during the pandemic, so many people like tuned out, dropped off social media, mm -hmm. spent more time at home, appreciated being with their family and friends in a way that they probably didn't like contextualize previously with that much value and import. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a way to synthesize the importance of being in the moment with technology. And mm -hmm. I feel like all of us are still figuring that out because I know I definitely am. I have no clue sometimes. <laughs> I, I definitely want your opinion because I'm like, you probably can teach us a lot. So I mean, <laughs> it's crazy because I have that same opinion. Like, there, the, you know, technology is moving everything to be quicker and more accessible. But at the same time, then you're missing, like, like uh, I was talking to someone about how, like, they think, movie theaters won't exist in a few years. And the there's so much joy in the act of leaving your house and going out of your way to do some task, even if it's going to do laundry or something, there's so much that could happen in between point A to point B. And there, you know, like living in the moment is harder than ever now with this need and to from from yourself and from other people to just be with everything, but then you're not actually being with yourself, and that 
is the hardest thing to do, I think, for a lot of people right now. Um, but, yeah, I think we're all figuring it out. I'm figuring it out, and I'm, like, supposed to know, you know? <laughs> no, I love that you brought up movie theaters as well. Like people, people keep saying, like, oh, no, they're going to go away. And it's like, you can't take away that in-person experience, yeah. that, that vibe of seeing the new Spider-Man, you know, with people cheering around you. I think that's something that, you know, we're moving away from with screens all the time. But, you know, it is good to be around people. And I do want to ask you again about being around people here. Have you felt inspired by the musicians that you've seen? Have you seen anybody that you've been like, oh, yeah, this is great? 100%. There's so, I mean, for us, it's like incredible to see artists that we have relationships with digitally that we've never met, right? Like, we met like a few artists from India that we've been following for like three years, right? Like, that we've been connecting with online. We got to see Sudan Archives again yesterday, who we toured with in 2020. Um, we tried to see T Pain, that didn't work. Um, <laughs> you missed T Pain? Who saw T Pain tragically? <laughs> <We> saw him. <laughs> um, but there, like tonight, uh, we're gonna be performing with Chai, who from Japan, huge fan, like cannot wait. So I love that South by brings together all sorts of artists in different points in their career. A lot of emerging artists with you know established acts, and then you know mid level artists as well. Which is, th to me, those are the best types of festivals. And they're like international, international, mm -hmm. and from mm -hmm. every genre you can imagine, which is probably the most exciting and yeah. inspirational part because mm -hmm. you can go from like one venue to the next and hear two very different things and it just keeps you it keeps you on your toes i feel like sometimes with festivals especially hip hop festivals the the lineup is you know all hip hop and as great as that is i love those shows it's sometimes great to be able to go in and out of different genres that mm -hmm. you just listen to at home and kind of have that experience in person i do really appreciate that no, I mean, walking down 6th Street, it was like crazy to me how many different genres I heard in like a two blocks band. Yeah. Um, I think that's really awesome. Have you heard somebody you've been really excited about? Yeah, yesterday, I think I saw the best performance of my life from Perfume Genius. Um, and I've been such a big fan of his for a long time. And we started chatting over the internet. And, you know, I idolize his music and his presence. And his and like he just embraces himself and the moment like he l looks like he's transcending when he's performing live what was crazy though is i'm on tour with this artist claude and they were playing at the stage next door and they were going on after a metal act um sasami and that is just so interesting to hear like all of the same people also would stick around for the next act. Yeah. Like, it's it's really interesting the way that mu music's moving and music appreciation. I think people are opening their minds, even though it's gradual. It's definitely happening. I love all these internet relationships coming to life right? at mm -hmm. South by Southwest. That's really cool. And speaking of internet relationships, I want to touch back on social media. As a queer artist, do you feel like you have to approach social media differently? Obviously, we know everybody is not as open to mm -hmm. different lifestyles. So do you deal with that in a different way when you're posting? I think so. I think, I think there's a lot of artists who you really wouldn't know they're queer unless you went onto their social media, right? Like in, in real life, you, you would have no idea, but you go on social media and they make it a point to let you know. And that's, it, sometimes your social media space or your page is like your home, right? Like this is where I'm safe on my page. Anything outside of it is like, I'm, I'm just a normal person, right? So it's interesting, e even, you'll even see it from like device to device, right? Like someone's, they might not even be like visibly queer on Instagram, but they might on their TikTok page, which mm. is so interesting. And, and I think you can see this with not just like people who are queer, but several different identities that people carry. Like they play with it in different ways on different platforms, right? So like, that's so true. Like the different platforms really dictate how artists kind of present themselves because you know like twitter is a much more cynical place full of veteran gays <laughs> yes. that are sometimes like i just don't give a shit and i'm tired at all <laughs> on twitter they just say it <laughs> exactly and you go on tiktok and it's just all of these like young queers and it's so exciting yeah, a lot of people like, finding out let's go. and we're yeah. so hot <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah and i feel like that is that's it's like being on the internet is sometimes sometimes like going to like venue to venue and being like what's going on here today? And you're like, oh, wow, this is, this is interesting. Because 
you never want to be the main character on Twitter. Yeah. Right? But yeah. on TikTok, that's what you're like hoping for if you're like constantly posting. Yeah. But they'll turn on you one oh second and it's boy. just like you're the enemy. <laughs> Not as bad on Twitter though. Twitter, oh my god, when you no. become the main character, it's the worst thing. No. I've never had Twitter. <laughs> wow. Don't see. <laughs> oh no. Well technically I have Twitter, but I've never posted a tweet. But I've thought about it so many times. Not worth it. But they just live up in my head. Yeah, it's um. it's you don't need to. Unless someone from Twitter is here. <laughs> we love your app. But <laughs> but I now love Twitter. I'm excited to now follow you. So when that first tweet comes, it's gonna mean a lot. Oh, yeah. Whatever that first tweet is. Yeah, when it's not my manager posting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll know. Oh, I'll know. I'm like you this came know. directly from you. Yeah. And I want to talk about the future for you guys. So where do you see your music headed, and what can we see coming up? Word Space. documents. Yeah. Oh, did you PDFs say word docu- and word documents. <laughs> We're taking it back. Yeah, we're actually leaving all the apps. Um, we're, uh, I mean, we're, this year, we, we, we released a project with, um, so we're, we're with Sub Pop Records, so we released a project with them last summer, um, and we are now getting ready to do our debut album, but it, it's strange, because it's like, we're very, pe- we're, we write through the experiences we have, and it's like, you spend two years inside, and it's like, I, I can't write a whole album about what? You know what I mean? It's strange when people have like crazy open <laughs> going to my fridge. And I'm like, what are you writing about? <laughs> um, so you know, we're gonna tour. We're gonna meet a lot of different people. We're gonna go to the UK in May, um, which is gonna be fun. First time in UK, and then I think um, we have like a we have a few different tours figured out. So then, and then we're gonna go into kind of like buckling down and writing. Um, yeah, yeah. I think like the future of our music is um, we pull it. From all streaming platforms, we, and really we get all off of the NFTs. internet. Yes. We're just Are you gonna put it on a CD? We're gonna put it tape? on CDs, tapes, just cassettes. Okay. Actually, sorry, <laughs> not CDs, just cassettes. Maybe Going like back. VHS, just for our music videos. Oh, I would love that. And it's just you can only get it at like antique stores, and <laughs> th- I think that's the future of our music. Yeah. That's how I see it going. And <laughs> that's, that's how you fight the NFTs. You fight them with VHS. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. A physical, a physical copy. No one can like right click save that. You have to get the actual VHS. <laughs> but I think yeah, I feel like in the future, in the fu- in the future, I feel like our music is only gonna get like more imaginative, mm-hmm. conceptual, interplatform, mm-hmm. and kind of be you know we're so multidisciplinary, and I feel like we're just gonna play around much more yeah. with physical art too because yeah. I feel like being online is, is so exciting and so engaging, but being able to bring some physicality to that is so meaningful right now, especially mm-hmm. almost having like a, a physical token of, of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I want more of that, something to hold. No, I like that. And something you said, you know, debut album. I feel like making music has changed because yeah. before there'd be like that debut album from an artist, but now you tend to hear a lot of music before you get that. So do you feel pressure with the debut album, even though you've already been creating? Um, yes, no. Uh, we so we've made three EPs and it, you know we purposefully were like give us three EPs so we can experiment with play with, figure out our sound and then go into this debut album which we we've you know amassed so many different creatives from around the world that we can really lean on so many different people to really go into this album now that we know like who we really like who we want out on this album for real right so. I feel good about it. I'm just more like, what direction are we going to go? Like, who are we going to be when we write it? Because I think we're very much people who change every month our sound and our look and how we feel and who we are. So I am excited to see, like, who Carta Madras is even five months from now. But I think that's cool because Mm -hmm. then you can dip into so many different genres and sounds and have something for everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has to be, like, one cohesive sound. Totally. You can play with it. Mm -hmm. And what about your music? What are we going to see in the future from you? I mean, I... Damn, you all just have good points. <laughs> but yeah, like it feels like every week I'm changing. And what's funny is like I I have another EP coming out soon, but I started writing that shit right after like COVID started to like let people go to clubs and like let me meet new people and it's really crazy like the timing of that. It's all about experiences and not being stuck in a room, like, worrying about that debut album. Because that's a dark place, but... uh, 
Yeah, it's it's changing, and I feel like I always want to bring something new to the table with every project because it shows that I'm growing, and I think the through line is that it's, you know, me. So there will be something in there that people recognize. I love that. Well, I can't wait to check out all of your music. I have to get a selfie on this S22. You guys cool with that? Yeah. yeah. Let's Absolutely. do it. I do have long arms, that's okay. <laughs> there, thank you guys so much. Give it up for our amazing artists today. <laughs> From the Galaxy House, I'm Tetris Kelly. Thanks, good night.